Good morning. Hello, Christopher. Hello, film star. <laughs> this would be my preferred way of functioning today. Yeah, I think we, we, we'd agree, but don't worry about it. <laughs> what, because it hides my face? Yeah, my hay fever is making my eyes very sore today. So yeah, so I'm just taking I'm just my... better this way. <laughs> I've just taken my hay fever tablet, so uh, yeah, too much too much grass on cricket pitches. I've found out. Oh yeah, well it's bad because they're they're um, hay making around us at the moment. It's just, I mean, it's great, it's glorious, but oh man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you a suffer, Chris? Are you a sufferer? I'm an occasional sufferer of hay fever, as in, I think about two months ago I was got it when some plants started to come out. I've been fine until this morning. Funny. Oh. This morning I woke up coughing and sneezing. And that's because had a hay fever pill. Yeah, that's because the pollen levels are extremely high for the next three days. I did hear this morning on the radio. A warm pollen high for the next three days. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. So when it's extremely high, then I might suffer a little bit. Fair enough. Well, I never... the tractors are just going and going. Yeah. Today. I, never, I never used to suffer from it till we were in Shropshire and then uh, they used to grow rape seeds in the fields behind us and that really got, got uh, set me off, the old rape seed. Is the smell as well is awful, it's greasy and sticky. and Well, it does make an oil. Yeah, yes, um, <laughs> clues in the name. Um, but yeah, they don't grow rape a lot around us. So you tend to see a lot of fields on the way to Salisbury when you drive. You get a lot of fields. And Dorchester area. You, you yeah. see we don't have much around here. Well, they were, the farmers, of course, will grow what's um, uh, needed at the time or where there's money to be made from it. So if they can find something that somebody else isn't growing, they'll try and get in there quick, which I don't blame. It's a good business model. Yeah, I guess it also you depends want... on your soil, would it? I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, you've, got, you've got the soil, the local weather, all those things as well. And the machinery, presumably, because you don't... I know you often people hire in what they need, but you're going to need a different... Yeah, different machines for different things. I can tell my farming knowledge really improved in 10 years. Uh, they have contractors. <laughs> very, very few farmers buy the actual stuff. They, yeah, the, 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 they, they go for contractors. That's why they travel for flipping miles and you get stuck behind them because they go from one farm to the next, to the next, to the next. Uh, yes, I had a very hairy trip back from Stoke Abbott yesterday afternoon um, because the Wiggly Road, sorry, this is very boring to everyone else, but the, big, the Wiggly Road from Stoke Abbott to us uh, was very wiggly with various large amounts of farm machinery coming in the opposite direction at varying speeds. It was very, very you young. You always meet them at the narrowest bit. Why is that? <laughs> Why is it that they kind of come loom around this huge corner? They wait till they see you coming, then dive out. That's what they do. But uh, and and the driver, they're extremely young, aren't they? Oh, they are terribly young. Well, it's great. That's fine. But it's just <coughs> I'm lucky because I've got a tiny little car, which is great, and I just sh shove it in a hedge, and I don't mind. But oh man, it's when you just come around the corner and they're there, and you're like, ah. Yeah, I had the same problems making my way to Charlton down yesterday evening because there were some very narrow lanes with lots of. Tractors and cyclists, they're not a very good combination, are they? Yeah. No. At the risk of offending our listeners and viewers, I, I'm not a great fan of pack cyclists. I find them... Particularly on a Sunday morning, oddly, because they're often out cycling, aren't they, as we're flying between it's services. It's their day off, you see. I know. <laughs> Have you not worked this out? Yes, I understand Every, that. Everybody else has a day off on a Sunday, you see. I get it, they... I get it. Just us. But, um, I mean, I hope you've learned the new IOA code rules about cyclists. Give them lots and lots of room. Two metres. Oh, it's, it's that for, so you don't catch COVID often. Well, I think that could have been the, the idea originally, yeah. It could have been. <laughs> a very, very quick reply to that. Yeah, very good. However, uh, Chris, do you, do, do you think we still need... Do you think rather than Rev Chat today, we could have the tutorial live? Do you think that would be good? Well, she's had, Joe's had a week to prepare... Yeah, we're ready, aren't we? We've got all the questions you want to ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've, got the, we've got the questions. You've been to theology college for the last two, <laughs> last week, at least twice. Yeah. You even had the opportunity... Just going doesn't make me intellectual. We, we thought by now it would have rubbed off. It's a waste of time <laughs> otherwise. You know? what, what are we sending you for if it's not rubbing off on you? Very true. Um, Incult my... Inculturation, I think it's called, isn't it? 
My visual aid this year for Trinity Sunday was a stretchy exercise band. Oh, go on then. Well, I was trying to communicate badly because obviously any kind of visual aid for, for the Trinity is, is difficult. I was trying to co connect this idea of that Father, Son and Holy Spirit are connected, but they are connected in a way that allows a lot of movement between them. So we were talking about the, the stretchiness of the Trinity. I've got some Trinity. I've got some Trinity bands somewhere, and the th different colours have different levels of stretchiness. They do. Would you like my selection? <laughs> oh dear! I do hope senior staff don't watch this. I'm sure they've got better things to do. But yeah, no, I brought I brought all my stretchy bands. The which is Father, which is Son, and which is Holy Spirit. Well, no, we didn't. We didn't get as far as assigning that, um, and we had to have people holding them. So it was it by their. I hope, you'd wash, I hope you'd wiped them down since you'd asked to use them before they held them. Well, it's been three days for COVID security. That's yeah. true. That's they true. in the common cup. I really don't think anyone would mind holding a stretchy band. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. You know, it's the thought of what's been going on with it to, to make worry people. Anyway, let's move on from my yeah. stretchy bands. But I'm just glad Trinity Sunday's behind me. I don't, on reflection, I don't think it worked very well. But... Other people have said it was very useful to help them think about Trinity, but I... Mm. Well, I didn't take my balls with me this week, this year. Oh, well, there's a thought. And I didn't take City Sweep and Sue. You should have done. Juggling balls, I mean, by the way, viewer. Juggling balls, you know, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Looking pretty boring as one, but when they get together, boy, do they look different. Excellent. There you go. I, right, I was shall just we move really on? boring. I just took Rublev's icon. Oh, very much. Then no, that's nice. That was kind of where I was going with the stretchy bands, actually, in the same idea of invitational and joining in and all that. Yeah, I've done my, I've done my when I visited Rublev's icon in Russia. Uh, sure. How many years have we had had to listen to David say when I visited Rublev's icon? It was, it? it was even Is on it? last week's Rev chat. Yeah, no, Chris, but I, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just saying, you, you know, you can't keep using the same illustration. So the balls. Well, you can if you leave. You could. That's, right. That's the you, reason to change are you, suggesting, are you suggesting something? Yeah, is it is a is it part of a plan or something? You and Chris have your... got something to tell you, us. You and Chris are hatching something, are you? It's a coup. Um, it's no. A coup. Or Joe's <laughs> well, got something I... to tell us. No, no, I have nothing to tell you. Um, just can I ask about the size of Rube? <laughs> that just sounds rude. The size of Rube Lev's icon. <laughs> is it? Is it big? I never, I never saw it, but the picture is very good. Uh, no, but how big is it? Like, um, it's like probably, I'm, I'm trying big. to think back thirty something years now. It's 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 probably, if I remember correctly, about eighteen inches by. Oh, small, small then. It's not. It's not a huge. You know, you know, it's not great triptych kind of thing. No, I don't know. But right, when, when I saw it, because the first thing that most of the Orthodox people would do, they would kiss an icon. Because they didn't want to get damaged, they covered it with a silver, solid silver covering. That you could see what it all, you know, they, mm. you know and you kiss it, and you could see that, that even the, even the uh, silver was wearing thin where people wow. kept it. It's a lot of kissing. Yeah, lots of kissing. You know what these monks get up to? <laughs> and on that note, I think we ought to pause. Yeah, thank you. A reading from Luke chapter eight. They arrived at the, at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a, long for a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you done with me, Jesus, son of... Sorry, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. 
for many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine were feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with them. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for them. There, explain all of that. I can give you a bit of background, because for once I've done a bit of background. Show off. So, um, obviously these are all other people's ideas. Uh, So it's good to remind ourselves that we're not in uh, Israel. Well, we're not in, we're not in Jewish territory, we're in Gentile territory, which does make a difference. Um, And so that's why we'd find herds of pigs, I guess. And apparently the uh, geography of this area is is quite steep land up to the shore. Because this bit always reminds me of that bit in Far From the Madding Crowd when the sheep go over the edge of the cliff. But um, so the the idea is that the geography of this area, although apparently it's quite difficult to pin down which bit of um, the other side of the lake they're in, um, but it has this steep sort of cliff going down to the lake. So that's why the pigs would go off the edge. Um, And the interesting bit that I came up with, well, I didn't come up with it, Tom Wright did, uh, is that at the end, Jesus says to him, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Theos is the Greek word. And then it says, so he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. Jesus. And the idea that actually Luke's already hinting at this idea that when you see what Jesus has done, you see God that stuff that John explores a lot and we've had recently in our Sunday reading. So to see God at work, if you look at what Jesus is doing, that is God at work. The idea that, and also the idea that Jesus doesn't call him to follow him. We often talk about Jesus inviting us to follow him, but often when he heals people, he doesn't invite them to follow him. He sends them back. And actually the the point of their healing is to tell other people about, sometimes the point of the healing is to say nothing at all, which is all very interesting. But this time he says, go and tell them what God's done. So the point of the healing and being rescued from those multiple demons is to spread the good news of what God, Jesus does and to be a missionary to his own community. It's it's almost a bit, it's different to... Because Jesus wasn't able to do anything in his hometown. No, limited by their lack of faith, yeah. Limited by their lack of faith. And yet this man is sent back to his hometown with the view that being a local, he's going to be more effective. Mm. And there's a contrast as well, because obviously Jesus is not on his home patch currently, and he's got all the power in the world. Mm. Because that man has faith that he can do something for him. And the other thing that's really interesting is, it, is of course, the demons recognise immediately who Jesus is. And that's common in the healing ministries around the beginning of all the Gospels, where Jesus is um, 
healing demons, the demons speaking through the person they're possessing are fearful of, of God's power. They recognize Jesus immediately, that he is the son of the living God. It says, yeah, what have you come, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? You know, yeah, like you say, that's it's so common, isn't it, that the demons recognize Jesus long before that. But we long for different ways to find out that no, that wasn't Jesus. We can explain it because. Is it interesting? So there's yeah. this, and you see kind of good and evil like right bang up against each other really quickly. Yeah. And the fear that the demons have of Jesus, because they know that once they're face to face with him, that their days are numbered. And yet you're absolutely right. You know, those of us who would say we're not demonic in any way, but yeah, Jesus probably didn't heal and Jesus probably isn't the son of God. And but, Sorry, I mean, David. Jesus actually listened to the demons as well. Please don't send us back into the abyss. Yeah, that's Please, can we go into that herd of pigs? Yeah. But then they go into the herd of pigs and he sends them in the river to drown. So presumably they then went straight back to the abyss anyway. Well, maybe. And I often feel I sorry for... research on that, but... Well, I also, I also feel sorry for the farmer. Yeah. Because that's his livelihood that's just drowned. And didn't, wouldn't it have contaminated the water? Oh. What, dead pig or dead demon? Yeah, no, dead pig. Any dead animal. I still have got David on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often we shut him up, is it? No, very rare. I think Joe's making up for lost time last week, personally. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. It's a very good tutorial. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fantastic. It, it's good. Yeah, I mean, but of course, I have I have expertise in dealing with uh, demonics and lunatics. So uh, I was just listening to uh, to yourselves. Oh, rude. Which which animal are you going to cast us into? <laughs> I'm not casting anyone into anywhere. And um, no, I mean it's a story about giving hope to the hopeless, isn't it? That's the beauty of it. Yeah. In fact, all the readings I think for this Sunday that is really the theme: giving hope to the hopeless. And particularly this, this this man in this story who uh, is so deranged that he's living in a in a graveyard naked. Yeah. Which actually is not unusual because you tend to find when people have lost their mind, or I've got to be careful words because it's very dangerous to use them, but certainly my experience of people whose mind is um, not in the right place, um, they lose all sense of uh, propriety and it, it, to them, they don't realise that perhaps they're naked or they're being aggressive or they're doing things that, you know, other people might class as being strange or antisocial. Yeah. So for that man, the fact that he's naked, he probably doesn't realise he, you know, uh, but it's a, it's a, but it's it's the spe it's the way Luke actually gets the very nitty. He gets all things in the story, doesn't he? Yeah, and there's this lovely image about clothing. Um, mm. the way the lectionary people have put it together, I guess the the. New Testament reading is from Galatians, where um, it says, uh, "As many as you, as many of you as were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ." Yeah. And then uh, the fact that you put on Christ and that changes who you are. Mm -hmm. And of course, in this story, he's naked when he's mad, and then once he's been healed, he comes in front of Jesus clothed. And of course, there's also in Colossians, there's clothe yourself with love. That kind of metaphor. Um, of being changed once we've encountered uh, the power of God, uh, our, you know, we literally are changed and our clothing, that's a metaphor rather than a physical stuff, I guess, but the clothing changes, we clothe ourselves with love. And for that young man, he was now clothed <coughs> with peace, wasn't he? Clothed with acceptance, clothed with freedom, yeah. um, literally dressed, but metaphorically clothed in something different. We must be very careful of the words we use, mad is not a good word. Um, mentally deranged is not a good word, as we used re reading the Bible today. Mind disturbed. I said that young man, not that young mad. You said, I think, but I'm not going to find out. Oh, sorry. However, I thought I said young man. Sorry. However, you'd use both. But it doesn't matter. I think the thing is, can you imagine the pain of his family and friends who've been trying to rescue him for, for a long time from this state of total mental breakdown or whatever he, 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 we don't know what illness he's got it suggests it's uh, it's one of the uh, the more psychotic type of illnesses by the words that are used to explain his, his type of illness but can you imagine that family, and along comes this Jesus bloke and straight away 
he rescues him for them. It must have been quite a quite a strange thing uh, for him. Um, Here's another question. Usually, when Jesus heals people, more and more people flock to him. Mm. And yet, we have this. Is it verse 30, 35? Where they it were says, fearful. Um, no, thirty six. They asked Jesus to leave. Yeah. Because they were they, they were afraid. Sorry, for the thirty seven. All the people of the surrounding country of the of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. Well, surely they should be seized with great hope because even this man possessed by demons is being healed and he's now of his right mind, which is a good thing. Yeah. Or is yeah, it but... going back to the farmer losing his livelihood and people making a profit off things that they shouldn't? As in, I'm thinking about the group of Jews saying that non Gentiles shouldn't rear pigs. Well, that might be completely screwed. It is interesting. I mean, maybe that reflects the context in which he's in because they were Gentiles and perhaps they weren't expecting or recognising or understanding of the power of God that they were seeing. So they were fearful. But actually, often people are fearful of the activity and power of God, probably rightly so, actually, as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, you know, the, the pig bit, I think, bismuthly, they just happened to be the animals that they were there, or although a Gentile, Luke, is he trying to express a kind of Jewish idea that Jesus would not condemn... Um, the demons into something that was Jewish, but would quite happily do it to something that they would see unclean. Is he trying to get the story to over to a different watching people as oh, well? I don't know. We're I in territory know. where we, I think we risk. <laughs> I've no idea. Not, no, not knowing, do we? Yeah, not knowing. But uh, but uh, and and as for the falling, I'm sure there were lots of animals floating in the rivers in those days that got stranded or whatever. I mean. It, if you, have you, I mean, have you have you been to Holy Land, Chris? Yes. And I've seen the colours and seen the states of particularly the River Jordan today, for instance. You know where they're diving in for the yeah, baptism water and it's filthy, dirty, and mucky because up the river the animals are peeing in it and whatever. Yeah, it's slightly different with the whole herd of swine going in than the old one. Well, we don't know what the herd was, do we? Well, no, it is plural. Yeah, we don't more than heard. one. Yeah, and we are than... talking about the lake, not the river. That's true, but yeah. I wonder if they went and fished them out. Could have done. Anyway, I think we've moved off the point. I think the point was, you know, Jesus is powerful. Jesus brings hope to the hopeless. That's right. And that, yeah, and that probably we've tripped ourselves over politically incorrect ways of talking about mental illness, which for which I apologise. But it's a difficult thing, isn't it? It what, is. But I mean, it recognises demonic and what we would now recognise as something different. Yeah, and I, th I think the story perhaps does give uh, hope and sustains, particularly perhaps carers today, that, that there is there is hope for you know their families, their friends who are ill to be saved. I mean, G G Jesus, we know, had the, had the power to that. But, uh, um, yeah, there is, there is always hope. And uh, that man found his hope, or his, his or his family found their hope of him being better served that day, with Jesus capable of doing as he did. And that's the great thing. We 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 still we still hold out in that power that Jesus, God through the Holy Spirit, can do things that perhaps we're not able to do in in that way. Good, thank you. You can find us where you find us. We're everywhere. Yeah, We're everywhere. 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 Especially, especially TikTok for Chris, yeah. It must be nearly time you guys started your TikTok. Oh, no, I haven't got time for TikTok. I haven't got the dance moves either. Yeah. I don't understand it either. I'm too old. I've just turned another year older, so I think that's a year one further thinking. away from TikTok, to be honest. There's another one I was thinking about on, on, on Test Match Special the other day, apparently. Michael Vaughan was saying his children are, his children are into it. And apparently, oh. you get a, you get a, blo a blast on your phone at any particular time. At that time, you have to do something or other. It could be something or other. I'm not sure. It's a new thing. 
Apparently, you, you don't know when the call's going to come, but when it, when the phone goes off, you have to do something for 30 seconds or something. Hmm. I didn't quite understand it, because then I'm much older, of course. <laughs> well, if you want to write us a letter, do. That'd be lovely. Now it's beginning to sound like Test Match special. Write yeah. us a letter, send us a cake, and yeah, uh, cake, we'll have a cake, lovely time. Cake, cake, <laughs> cake. Cake, yes. Yeah. Someone mention cake. cake. Send us cake. We don't mind. We can cope with cake. <laughs> Excellent. Lovely to see you both. And uh, do catch up with us next week. We'll be back same time, same place on YouTube. See you yeah. soon. See you soon. Hope so. Bye bye now. Bye. See you.